you know, maybe I should just tell you some of the facts as I remember them. I got very disillusioned with theater and the lack of adventure in it and experimentation. So I just did a story of my day as fast as I could speak it. Joyce, who was running it, asked me who wrote it. I sat down at this table in front of whoever came. It was word of mouth. Maybe there were 15 or 16 people there. And it was everything I could remember about sex and death till the age 14, which was the name of the monologue. I was using myself to play myself. I was playing with myself. And I was hooked. I was hooked. It went through me like a thump, like a whoo, like a you know what. I kept a pretty tight diary for the facts, for the details. My uncle said there are two kinds of people in Barrington Island, those who belong and those who don't. I'm discursive. I'm associative. I couldn't spell. I couldn't write. I could barely read. I didn't know that had nothing to do with writing. My mother committed suicide. Shall I do it in the garage? And the rumors were she died of cancer. There was no mention of suicide. Not dead, not killed herself. You know, again, that was avoidance language. And everything is going fine. Everything is going fine except for the squirrels, the gypsy moth, and a pig farmer named Rocky. Swimming to Cambodia it was a radical, and I'd always been rooting for that breakthrough. It reached a larger audience, and I became more popular. I was told that I was manic depressive, was on uh, clonopin and lithium. I didn't think I could do another monologue. Being a dad is fantastic, it's very grounding, and it's got me out of myself because, believe me, their needs are bigger than yours. Forrest came to me very early on with questions about death. He wasn't even four. Everyone knows they're going to die, but no one really believes it. I like telling the story of life better than I do living it. One of the ways to reincarnate is to, is to tell your story. And I get enormous pleasure from that. It's like coming back.